when you find something brand new, but yet it is quite old. That means they don't work. <laughs> All right, it means they don't. There's a problem. There's a problem to be had, and there's a problem with these binoculars. Uh, and the problem is what's called collimation. Fancy term for saying that when you look through the binoculars, the view that you get doesn't line up perfectly from eye to eye. So when I look through at something, uh, the uh, two objects don't line up perfectly. They're out of sync ever so slightly. But if I do them like this, all right, if I do them like this and go out in the opposing direction and I look through them, oh man, they line up perfect, okay? What that tells me is that they are not off by much, okay? They're off. They're not off by much. So I've been looking around online and I read about how to fix these. And I've seen people taking punches and hammers and trying to adjust the collimation. I'm not enthralled by this as a concept. What I have done <clears throat> is I went and got a C-clamp, some wood, and some very small screwdrivers. And I made a tool that I can then go in and brace into the mechanism here and tweak it ever so slightly. No banging, no forcing anything. It's not the Zeiss tool, which would probably cost thousands of dollars, but it does exactly the same thing as the Zeiss tool for free. Inside of there, there is a little notch right there and a little notch right there. You can see another notch there and another notch there. And it's kind of hard to make out, but there's a lot of space in black right there. Can you make that out? But on the other side, there's like no space at all. There's there's nothing extra sticking out right there. But look at inside of there at how thick that is where those notches are. Those are called eccentric rings. Or eccentric rings? The, the trick is that they're thicker on one side than the other. And you can twist those and change the angle that the um, objective lens is, is facing, okay? So I'm not sure which direction they need to go, but as I sit here and I look at these, they are certainly not facing the same direction. So I'm gonna go in there and try to twist it counterclockwise. We're just gonna see what happens twist them by 15 degrees, I think it's the magic number, and uh, then go and look at something far away and see if they line up. All right, it's in there. Oh, it moved. It moved. So they're free is, is good. So you never know with this sort of thing. It can be all locked up in a problem. Again, it's all about the tool here, folks. Let's see if you can see it twist. Oh, it twisted just a little. That's all we gotta do. Now we'll go and look at it and see if it's better or worse. Hopefully it's fixed. That would be amazing. And I'll be back to tell you. Okay, I feel like that's very close but not there. Um, we're gonna keep going and see if we can get it great. And there it goes. Let's see what we got. All right, <clears throat> I've been working on these for a second and I went out to test them and they seem worse than they were to begin with which is not even remotely a problem. It's, it's probably impossible and imperceptible to you to see right there, right in the light, right, right here where the light's shining. You see a little mark right there, right there. Yeah, that mark right there. That is where I started. And I've been twisting uh, this ring in relation to that. And I've moved it. 20 degrees or so, and it doesn't seem better, it seems worse. So that makes my assumption that I need to go back the other direction. Uh, and again, with the tool, 
this is not a difficult task at all. So here we go. So I've gone back to where I started and then a little past it, probably 10, 15 degrees past it. Now I'm going to go check and see if it's better. And we're back. Now we're close. That was almost it. Uh, one of the benefits to what I do for a living, and what I do for a living is uh, work with microscopes a lot, <laughs> is I can kind of get a feel for this sort of thing. And buddy, we're close here. We're real close. Uh, so I'm going to give it just a little bit more. I could probably leave it where it is and claim they're good. But if I can give it just a little more, I think we're going to be in the wheelhouse of perfection. Let's see what that looks like. And we're back. Um, they're perfect. Well, I'm not going to call them perfect. They are just fine. Like, there's... <laughs> There's not a thing wrong with these binoculars now. Um, so just a minor tweak, a little bit of knowledge, all right? The capacity to build, the capacity to build a little tool like this that I could then get in and very precisely adjust the little rings on the inside of these lenses. Yeah, I tell people all the time that knowledge is power. And finding something broken and fixing it for free that. Now let's reassemble these babies and see where it takes us. So we've got this little plastic ring that goes in there like that. And then the outer trim ring goes like that. Not too tight. Yet again, plastic insert like so. And anytime I'm dealing with incredibly fine thread like this, what I do is I twist it backwards until it snaps. Let's listen. Hope you hear it. And it's ready to screw in. Okay? Uh, it keeps you from cross-threading things when you know it's just in the perfect spot. And I will also say the following. You can look at these trim rings. You see that little chip in the paint right there? Just a little bit of this action right here. Not bad. Okay. I'm probably going to coat that two, three times just to get the consistency right. So now, what I would say is these are perfect brand spanking new 1970s binoculars made by Zeiss. And it seems I recorded no outro for this video. Well, this is the end of our little trip down adjusting combination of a pair of binoculars. I hope you enjoyed the process. And what I want you to glean from this is as follows. Most things that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are in fact far more simple than you would expect. And whenever you hire someone to fix something, what you're really hiring is their knowledge. I advise you to seek out that knowledge for yourself. Build the tools you need. Buy the tools you don't have. Invest in yourself. And by doing so, you will be able to fix things for yourself far more often and become enriched as a person by comparison. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you had an uh, enjoyable experience. I hope that you are capable now of uh, fixing your optics as best as possible. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for more DIY advice. Thank you.